Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and I'm very good at PIP. As was announced in literally every newspaper this week and was talked about on radio shows and it, it just like what the f happened um i i knew putting myself on youtube that i would be targeted i get that um i i oh i didn't understand i d i did not understand i didn't i didn't get to the level that it would go to it's uh it's been really overwhelming and I don't even know I don't I don't know where to start I feel nervous doing this like normally I'm just chatting to you you the person that struggles with chronic illness or has a loved one that struggles with chronic illness I'm a bit worried that our audience on this video might be a bit different so it's making me a bit nervous so I kind of like just need to get myself together and remind myself that I started this channel because I'm doing content that I wish had been available when I first became chronically ill. You, my audience, made it clear to me what you need help with is PIP, which infuriates me, as you know, because I've talked about this loads, because it drives me mad because people like me shouldn't be needed. Like we, sh we the disabled, the chronically ill community shouldn't have to get help to apply for funding we are legally entitled to and because we're a I think Ollie's just ran off with my shoe Oi! What is that? You're an assistance dog Assistance Thank you Wasn't assisting was she then? She's exercising me <sighs> She's great! She can take my socks off I had a photographer around the other day not for anything to do with what happened but for like website stuff and I got Ollie to open a drawer for me, teamwork, blew her mind. I was, you know, and then she does stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, she's great, but she's still a dog. <sighs> what was I talking about? Let us link with this bit. This is why I can't speak to journalists because I have brain fog. And you all know that. Like you, when I say you, I mean, the chronically ill community or the loved ones but can you imagine me speaking to a journalist like when I speak to you you are on the same side and I, oh, I had no idea how difficult it is for journalists I had no idea the pressure that they're under the cutbacks they've had I, I didn't know so I've been very it's been a lot of learnings this week but Speaking to a journalist, their goal is obviously they need to get views, they need to get clicks. So, oh, sorry. I, this is something else that I'm declining a lot quicker. Excuse me. So, those of you that know me know that I have a severe form of arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and I really struggle with chronic fatigue. I'm in pain, bearing levels of pain 24 7. But it's the chronic fatigue that rules my life so not anyone's fault but i've been extremely tense like just apprehensive this week with everything that's happened and then because i'm tense my ribs like normally i wouldn't be that puffed from just walking to um ollie and back um well obviously I decline as the day goes on so if you tried if i was doing that at like five in the evening yeah i would but normally when i'm chatting to you it's not that bad so i've definitely declined again not anyone's fault just the whole situation so now i'm my days have been cut in half like and i only have like good, a good on average a good five hours a day where i'm like what i'd say near capacity like switched on so that's cut but i'm starting to try and get myself together um when everything exploded i know this is all gobbledy but just like i'm just gonna try and just be like normal and i have written myself some notes to try and keep myself on track but i feel like we've already blown that i'm already i, I don't know like 
did I say that someone like me shouldn't exist? Like, I don't think I should exist. It's wrong that I exist. It's wrong that the other organizations and companies that charge money exist when people are legally entitled to it. I've probably already said that, but it's very important to me. Okay, right. Before I started YouTube, I, um, just take a breath. I, um, I knew I didn't want to do interviews because the brain fog, I have never been good at being politically correct. It's not my skill base. Um, you can check, like, if you speak to any of my previous employers or customers, they will agree with you. I'm shit at it. I'm not good. So I know that interviews and stuff like that, it's not suitable for me. And obviously I haven't got the energy to actually go anywhere anyway. Um, and I don't want to have to worry. And it's, it's, it's not even that. Like I made a decision before I launched the YouTube on, I want to promote living with chronic illness in a positive manner. To do that, I need to add value to people who are living with chronic illness. So I made a decision, like, obviously I spoke to my business coach and everything, um, and he's very great. Like, he absolutely supports what you, the individual, wants to do with your business, right? So I think most um, entrepreneurs, because that's what I am now, like, most entrepreneurs would love to have these newspapers and talk shows and all that approach them for interviews. I think people pay a lot of money for that sort of media attention, don't they? No, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I haven't got the energy for it as well. And it was a choice of, hang on a minute, because I, I was getting, I felt like I was getting a lot of pressure that I had to respond. I have to speak to people. I have to do interviews. I've got to do a statement. And I'm like, but I don't want to. I don't want to. So... I had to give myself a bit of a bitch slap, to be honest, and go, hang on a minute, I have a choice. What do I want to do? I want to add value to people with living with chronic illness. Well, how much energy have I got? So some days I literally had like, let's say, pushing it three hours energy. Who am I going to give that energy to? You, 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 people with chronic illness. Not, not anyone else not the haters which they're hardcore they're like really hate me um no no so i carried on with my client meetings which was like when i was in the meetings i know like obviously everyone heard everything saw everything and i'm like i turn you know okay matilda just wants you to know there is a bird in a tree okay everyone there's a bird in a tree matilda matilda Shh, come here matilda, come here come here i haven't got the energy to go we're having to work on her training on this right she's the rescue not the assistance dog training assistance dog right so yeah when i was doing the client meetings i was like um you know they were checking i was all right that was do you know what that's been stunning? Like, start the client meetings, they're like, are you all right, Charlie? And I'm like, no, I'm not all right. I, I feel a bit overwhelmed. Um, you're all awesome, by the way. I really, really appreciate the support. Um, so I was like, yeah, I got, you know, I've been approached by blah, 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 for interviews. And I said, no, so I can talk to you. And you can see them proper laughing, like, really? And I'm like, yes, I want to help you. So that, that did, there, were, there has been some like, you know, I think that's a really nice compliment to pay to people, you know, no, I want to speak to you. Matilda, 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 come here, come on, come here, good girl, I'm trying to talk about really important stuff, <laughs> really important stuff, so don't, we don't need to know about the birds, okay, just relax, <sighs> right. Told you about that. Okay. Yeah, I'm very scared. I'm like really scared. And all of us, 
it's the it's the level of scared that all of us are so every single person i've ever spoken to or that has emailed me or anything that i've you know anything none of us want to have to claim this funding none of us every single person i've ever spoken to is what i count as a worker and what we're struggling with is the fact that our chronic illness has taken over so much that we can't work we're losing our jobs um or the the cost of being chronically ill so we have no choice but to apply for the funding and then there's that fear the fear of what if i i i feel good charlie what if i feel good and i i manage to go like to a cafe with my mum and I get photographed what if they photograph me and I always say the same thing on let them because DWP have got a really difficult job haven't they like we know as humans there's always going to be no matter where you are what you're doing there's always going to be certain type of humans that will abuse the system the whole process of PIP is for anyone that's watching this where you you've only like recently heard of me and you weren't you're not you don't understand how this process works I want you to imagine this right you're female and you've got an issue with your vagina stick with me on this because it's going to make sense you've got an issue with your vagina right so instead of going to the gynecologist what happens is the bed with the stirrups is set up in a town center you're put into the stirrups, you're stripped down you're put into the stirrups with your legs spread and as strangers come up to you with no qualifications, well, no, not no qualifications, but strangers are coming up to you going, I don't think there's anything wrong. And are asking you questions. That is less degrading than what you have to go through during the pit process. And if you're watching this thing and you're like, oh, that's, that's ridiculous. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't understand what we have to go through. You don't understand what this is like. Some of it isn't the government's fault because they obviously have to try and filter out the liars, which we want them to. Like, we don't want the people fake claiming to do it. Um, but we all have this fear, like, par like constantly paranoid fear of someone taking a photograph of us because the bulk of us, to glance at us, we don't look sick. Like, I get to the untrained eye, and even the trained eye, there are times where I do not look sick. So my biggest fear that I'm terrified of is people trying to follow me when I'm out with Ollie. And taking photos of me and being like, look, look, she's a liar, she's a liar, she's not sick, look, look. Look at her, she's fraudulent. And we all have that level of fear. It's not comfortable having to claim this funding. It's not. None of us want it. It breaks people going through this process. There are people that have taken their own lives when going through this process because of this process. I'm not exaggerating when I explain how degrading and awful it is and then once you're through the process if you even stick with it or get through or whatever you're constantly living in fear now my level of fear has i don't want to be a pussy i don't want to be a pussy i don't want to be like bullied into something but i'm i'm fucking terrified i'm i'm, I'm terrified i'm so scared um no one's turned up at my home which I could tell you now, my mum's not going to be able to handle that. Her mental health isn't good. She's not going to be able to handle that. Like, um, I was told that what happened is, is the media being nice to me. Like, uh, what when they're not? What about when they're not? Um, and also, that you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Now they have me. Um, that's it. So... And we all know, unfortunately, because like humans, we seem to respond better to negative stuff or people 
like making mistakes and stuff like that we, we don't respond as well to like there's not sort of many happy stories in the media i don't know because just as humans we're naturally i don't know i don't know but you know what i mean like i'm just scared and and the problem is like some of the haters that i've got it's like this is like what they believe they believe and this is a harsh example right they believe that someone with severe cerebral palsy in a wheelchair unable to speak like maybe dribbling um that's disabled anyone else like my situation like anyone else you're obviously a fucking liar now there's nothing i can do about that i'm not even i don't respond to trolls i don't respond to hate and the only reason i'm discussing this now is because i'm just being honest with you about being scared what if what, what if one of those people like comes after me when i'm out with ollie and is like you're not sick well i can't fucking run away i have to sit on the floor when i go out i have to sit on the floor like what am i gonna do like i'm just scared and i think that realistically this is going to be in my future i i genuinely thought because i'm doing chronic illness that i'd be like the tech youtubers where they can still walk around the street you know like logan paul ksi they can't walk around the street but a lot of the tech youtubers can walk about and live their lives because most of their audience is in their homes playing with their tech um so i thought oh my my audience is that it's not gonna be a problem because we're pretty much the sort of hermits um warrior hermits but hermits um so it'd be all right but it's not happening like that because chronic illness doesn't discriminate like even at my local shop they've seen me on tv because a member of their family suffers from chronic illness it's chronic illness ripples doesn't it, it doesn't just affect us as the individual it's our friends it's our jobs it's our family you know poor mum guilt like so it's not it's not going like what i thought um i'm absolutely not giving up i'm just going to update you because like things happen um but it's really simple i want to add value to people who are suffering from chronic illness that's it yeah i'm like i'm trying to think i'm like no it's that simple 